Welcome to We Question and Learn. Helping support this program is Strategy Solutions, a business development firm that provides strategic planning, market research, and project management services to private corporations, faith, and community-based nonprofits and communities on the web at getstrategy.com. Welcome, Christy Bailey, to the studios. Thank First you. time here? Yes. First time Thank on you. the air? Mm-hmm. It's great. We're going to talk about what I think has been one of the most interesting and progressive and something, I, uh, an organization that we all should learn about, and that's YEP. And it's not a country music band, right? It is. No, it's <laughs> <not>. <laughs> Young, eerie professionals. How that's did, right. How did this start in our community. Let's start with that. How did YEP start in Erie? Sure. There were two individuals who were just interested in connecting more with young just people in folks. Erie. Yeah. And they, yes, and they started um, a monthly meetup. And I think initially it just started as a, a networking opportunity. And okay. um, it's really grown into something more um, about three years ago. We uh, became a part of the chamber. Erie Regional Chamber and Growth oh, Partnership. Oh, okay. Okay. So that was are, a good move. It was. Yeah, it was. Very and good. Uh, uh, so now we operate under uh, the chamber. And uh, recently, um, I think just really started connecting more with, with that group and uh, starting programming and um, different event opportunities for, for the young professionals. and So and, under the Erie Regional Chamber and Growth Partnership, are you, are you in their budget or you're on your own? How does that work? Yes, it, yeah. we are a partnership. We were our own 501c3. You were and, separate. Right. Yeah. And so um, now we are under the... To the auspices of the chamber. Exactly. Well, that, that's great. So you get mm-hmm. to network with the chamber as well. Yes. Now, all of you folks in the group... Um, 40 under 40? How does that work? That doesn't mean you just have 40 members. No. So the 40 under 40 is actually um, an addition that the Erie Reader okay. puts out. Okay. Um, so that's a publication that's that they started. Right, right. They started uh, putting that out about six years ago. And uh just to um, honor those people that are doing great things in the community. And how does that relate to you? Is it part of you create that group or you offer them suggestions? No, no. in fact, we never no. really had a partnership until this year. Oh, wow. So uh, when I came on board, I uh, I reached out to the Erie Reader because I knew that they were doing this 40 Under 40 uh, publication and uh, thought that it was important that we connected um, because obviously we're working with the same people, same, with the same, same group of people. And that criteria, 40, is that a marker still? Uh, we we say forty ish. Okay, so for, it's for not young area professionals, because I remember someone very prominent hitting age forty, and it made the newspaper. He couldn't belong to your group anymore. Oh, <laughs> well, and it wasn't anything serious. It right. was just interesting that there was that line of demarcation. Right. So there's not a hard line. There isn't. We, yeah, you okay. know, we just ask that you know you if it. If, if it's obviously going to uh, benefit you in your career and uh, your development and you think it's a, a, a good organization for you to be a part of, then obviously we welcome you to be a part of now that. Now, you're the but president right now, am I yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay, and how long have you been president now? Uh, it's or? actually just been a year. Okay. And um, took over back in, well, June last year mm-hmm. in 2017, mm-hmm. but uh, didn't really announce the transition until January. January. So this okay. year in January, we had a launch of a new brand, new uh, logo, uh, new mission statement. Um, you built this all from scratch going into 2017 then? Tw- going into Wait, 2018. 2018, forgive mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, kind of built from scratch, but uh, but also taking, you know, the good things that, that yeah, were before. right. Plus right. the affiliation with the Erie Regional Chamber and Growth Partnership. So exactly. that's been all a benefit to you. It has. How many folks do you have involved? So right now yeah. we have 135 members. That's a substantial group. How often do you meet? We we meet. Uh, we we try to have events twice a month, okay. and um, that's been that's been pretty uh, successful since January. Um, but we also have committees. So we have three different committees, mm-hmm. and they meet 
on a monthly basis. And okay. sometimes they, they'll meet more than on a monthly basis, depending on what they have going right. on. And the committees focus on, so for we have right. We have a member and business engagement committee, which they uh, focus on uh, gaining members, uh, working with the uh, nonprofits and organizations in the community to to have volunteer opportunities for our members. Okay, so you're active. You're looking to reach out uh, into Definitely. the community and provide service. Definitely, okay. uh, we are. You know, we're all about just giving the opportunity for the young people that are either new to the area or new in their profession to just, you know, get involved. You always hear, I want to get involved. Um, but people just don't know how. So we right. are an organization where if you're a young person in Erie and you want to get involved, yeah. uh, you join as a member of Young Erie Professionals. That doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you have to do anything. You're just um, given the opportunity for um, a different, a variety of different things. So we mm -hmm. have volunteer opportunities. Um, one, another one of our committees is community and civic engagement. Okay. And uh, they're very active in, uh, in the community and civic world. Um, so they have someone heading up the Erie's Public Schools, the city and county government. Oh, really? Um, the Erie Downtown Development Corporation. Um, and, you know, when we uh, rebranded in, in the beginning of this year, we really felt that it was important to create those partnerships with those community organizations um, if we really wanted to be a part of the transformation mm -hmm. that's going on in Erie. Do you charge dues to belong? You have 135 yes, energetic we young people? Right. So um, because we are a partner of the chamber, yeah. if you work for a chamber member, yeah. oh. then you get a discount, which it's $50 annually. And if you... At discount. Right. And of course, your employer, your well, you work at the Erie Federal Credit. I Union. do. I work for Erie Federal Credit Union, and we are a huge supporter of oh, the yeah. chamber. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So yes, any employee at the Erie yeah. Federal Credit Union gets a fifty dollar annual fee. Fee. And as a, at a discount in order to participate in the app. Right. Yeah. And then um, if you're a non-chamber member, it's yeah. seventy-five dollars. Okay, so it's not too bad. That's no. that's a reasonable fee for an annual membership to. Uh, Definitely, uh, a large organization as you have. Right, and yeah. we and we provide a lot of opportunities. Um, there are some events that that cost. A couple uh, bucks. Yeah, it's it's usually nothing large, and yeah. um, we try to give discounts where well, we you're can. You're covering your expenses just like any other nonprofit. Right. You're a five hundred one c three. Right. Do you get involved with the nonprofit partnership? Are you a member there? We okay. actually had. A, a panel discussion there at the beginning of the year. Oh, you did! Congratulations! So, Wonderful. So yes, yeah. we um, we have been having quarterly panels, okay. uh, forums, and that uh, particular one was on uh, nonprofits and uh, how to gain a seat on board of directors. So Excellent. We had, yeah. So we had. So you different... folks are really delving into some community issues. How we to are. participate with nonprofits. Um, you're looking at community and civic engagement, how you can get involved. You have volunteer opportunities. You work on service projects. I think you said there was one more. Yes, uh, uh, professional and leadership development. Is, how so, does that work? So professional leadership development, we have a few different um, things going on with that. We we have a mentoring aspect of that, which we have someone that's uh, reaching out to the colleges and the community because – um, let's face it, we have a ton of we have wonderful higher education and, universities. Mm -hmm. and just <clears throat> connecting those seniors to young professionals in Erie to show them you can stay here and have a great so the students career. that are say at Mercyhurst University, mm -hmm. they're a senior, they can get involved in YEP or yes. participate with YEP. And you help them along. Exactly. Oh, that's that's ideal because you you folks are mostly all working. I'm sure. Obviously we are. You are. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> Which is why you're professionals. Um, so you're in any kind of field. You have manufacturing folks. You have we banking, do. You have yep. federal credit union mm -hmm. type people. You mm -hmm. have medical. Yes. Uh, yes. Medical yeah. and manufacturing is uh, there. Those are two legs of the organization that I'm really focusing on growing. OK, um, just good. because I think that um, 
with the young people in Erie, there's a misconception that manufacturing is dead in Erie just because. Oh no, of, it's huge. In Erie. I, exactly, yeah. and um, you know, my husband is in manufacturing, so I know oh, a little helps. bit. That helps. You got an inside look. Exactly, at that. and right. so um, I've met a few manufacturing younger manufacturing people along the way, and uh, really just trying to build that well, up a little bit more. There are people that are owning. I know. Manufacturing. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing the amount of things that are made in Erie. Oh, yeah. I don't think that people we realize. We have a TV show like that. <laughs> and, right. And Yep May- can produce it. Yeah. 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 So events, a couple times a month, you said. And do you meet in yes. different places? Do you uh, go to a business and tour? How, does, how, how do your meetings work? So um, this year we structured a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have three different types of events. Oh, okay. Um, the, one event is a monthly event. We call it Off the Clock, and they Off are... Off the Clock? Yes. Okay. They are networking events with a purpose, so it's not just networking. Okay. Um, it's I like the way you with the purpose. pointed that out, because it's <laughs> not... We're, we're not here just to have a couple of exactly. beers. We're here to do some networking with the intent. Exactly. So, um, for example, um, this past month, we did a... Uh, Erie food tour, really, in partnership with uh, PICPA, which is with uh, Pennsylvania, I I, yeah, it's yeah. the CPA group, yeah, in, yes, yeah. In right, the um, Pennsylvania Institute of Certified Public yeah, the Accountants. C- they've, I think. they've come up here and done a couple interviews, and that's mm-hmm. a, that's an outstanding statewide organization. It is, it yeah. is, and and you know we we really want to uh, partner more with different organizations so that they can learn what we're doing and we can learn what they're all about. Yeah. Um, and you're not limited to any type of business you're interested in? No, no. Um, yeah, so okay, yeah. basically anything that would be beneficial to a young Education, a young yeah. person in Erie. So um, we, did, we did that food tour. That was really fun. It was okay, fun, yeah. but we also learned a little bit about PICPA. So that was, you know, the networking with a purpose. Um, and then... And they are active in this community, PICPA. They are, yeah, they are, yeah. yes. Um, so those are monthly networking with a purpose events, okay. and then we also have bi-monthly events. They're called a seat at the table, yeah. and these are luncheons that are uh, with top executives and leaders in the community. And it's not a luncheon where we learn about their organization or their business. It's a luncheon where we uh, receive mentoring from from that from company. Them. From from the executive that comes to the okay right so um so so far this year we've had Jim Berlin from Logistics oh, Plus oh he's amazing isn't he yes highly energetic yes. individual Nick yeah. Scott Jr. Um, another outstanding community member Dion Wallace Oakley wow she's from Erie Insurance um yep, yep. and also Boo Haggerty and Boo yep. and we are going to have uh, James Grunk the new CEO coming on board yeah. We limit those to 20 individuals just, oh, really? just to keep it a, as an intimate it sane, conversation. Yeah, yeah. We give them some questions ahead of time, and um, that's what they use to and I, the base And I imagine they come with a good deal of enthusiasm, and I'm sure they they're do. glad. They do. I, I was going to ask you, and that was a dumb question because I'm sure they're really interested in speaking with you for a lot yes, of good reasons. Yes, And, you know, it gives uh, the opportunity for the young people to feel more comfortable with, with those executives, too. And yeah. a lot of times when you're at an event, you may feel uncomfortable yeah. just walking up to a ba- you know a top yeah, exec. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's Cold just, calling's not fun. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> but but these these conversations just, we, we get to know them a little bit better, and they may act as a, a mentor in the future for... A coffee or whatever, if you're yeah. having issues, and I'm with sure they're interested they, in meeting your members. Oh, they de- they are. In fact, we have a lot of people reaching out to us now that um, more and more people are hearing about these um, that want to get on the calendar. They would like to be on it. Yeah, right. that's what ha- when they find the value. Exactly, it's not hard to find speakers. Right. You mentioned a third leg, or did I miss something? You have the yes. monthly events. You have the mentoring event is the bi-monthly mentoring event. And then the third leg is? We have quarterly panels, panel discussions, forums. Okay, where, where do we, you have those? We have, Depen- is it depends, it depends yeah, right? Mm-hmm. So the first one was held at Erie Insurance oh, uh, the okay. in the auditorium there. Yeah. Um, we had the mayor and his new staff administration uh, speak, yeah. speak to the group about what their plans were and just... Uh, again, just an introduction to to the administration, so we can put a face with the name and 
get to know what they're doing and uh, and then you know now that th they've been doing what they're doing for for a little while we can connect the dots later down the road right. and then we've had like I said uh, we had that other uh, forum at the nonprofit partnership right. yeah um, and we have another one coming up which will be uh, a panel of human resource uh, yeah. specialists that yeah. are going to talk to our group about um, interviewing and you know best practices to do you feel put on an as a young upwardly professional yourself do Young people feel an affinity to where they work, or the rumor that people are just looking to move on up. You know, uh, I, you know, there's some cities in the United States where moving up, if you don't, you're a dinosaur, so to mm -hmm. speak. That's an ex exaggeration. That the concept of moving around is. How do you feel about here? Are your members more? I, I'm here in Erie. I like where I work. I want to support. What? Or are they more self motivated? Or I think it depends on, on where on on the person yeah. and where they work and yeah. and um, even their family. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of people who have their roots here, so it's easy to. Well, stay that's right because some of your folks are locally right. born and bred. Companies. Which is which is one of me. You know, you're or a local of, Erie person, exactly. So and you love Erie. You're here. You're working at a, an Erie-based company. You're right. You're right where you want to be. So mm -hmm. in, in your case, as with many of your members, you're. You're happy to be here. This is it for you. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I, I never wanted to leave. I, I yeah. knew I wanted to stay yeah. here. So. Well, your your organization is exemplary of planting good seeds right in the middle of the city, too, mm -hmm. and uh, offering uh, job opportunities. Now, uh, this may be a tough question. Does your group help people look for work, or is it just people that are already professionals and embedded or entrenched or are working? Um, so is it more of a... An employment, not employee. You know, right. Are I you think, more I think, to help people move, or you're more, or uh, maybe if you, neither. If you're, I mean, if you're in between jobs, it's definitely a, a, good a benefit to be a part of something like this because you're go going yeah. to meet people and um, yeah. may have conversations where, uh, you know, there's a position open that you may not have thought about. Um, we do uh, allow employers to you know reach out to our group for uh, that's, specific I guess job that's where I was going is it a good place to be just in case you'd like to l learn another career or find a different job right so um, that the the vision is in the future to have a specific job portal for our organization for employers to reach out to us for, with different job opportunities um, but right now you know uh, through the chamber website, they have a job bank. So um, oh, we've been we've okay. been. Okay, you're working inside. The, I forgot the auspices of the chamber. Right. So there is an opportunity mm -hmm. to feel your way around the right. community. Right. Yeah. But um, for an example, I have a really great success story from one of the past events um, that we had. Uh, it was we had a golf outing, and mm -hmm. one of our members, who's a realtor, uh, brought a uh, LeCom student because she had just really? sold him a house. Um, he's going to be at LeCom for the next few years. Yeah, and came to came to uh, the 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 meeting at the golf course, and everyone stood up and talked about um, what they do and where they work, mm -hmm. and someone stood up and and explained that they had a job opportunity and he wasn't a member but he but he heard um them say s some some things about this job and said hey my girlfriend is going to be moving here next month wow and that's what she went to school for so they oh. connected and she actually got the job oh that's a marvelous story. so yeah. so i mean just right there it's just about being in, in the right place at the right time and being being active in the community, there are opportunities out there, and you just n never know where to find them. Now, when you folks meet, do you sit and brainstorm together on occasion? What what do folks what do young folks think about Erie, Pennsylvania? And I know you got you have a positive framework. Yes. I know your outlook is very positive, but just in general, um, we hear all these terrible rumors, yet they're not true. Do young people have a positive feeling towards Erie? The people that are involved with young area professionals, are yes, positive. very positive. How do positive. they feel about the community? Do they see different things in the community that are 
They do, and and I think that right now it's just it's such an exciting time for Erie. We see the transformation, oh, okay. the new mayor, um, the EDDC. I mean, that's that's EDDC, huge right? that's for huge. the yeah. city, and um, we're just really excited to to watch all of that unravel, and and also to just be a part of that change too. Yeah. Um, even with downtown, I mean, I talk to people that haven't been in in uh, Erie in a while, and they come and. They're they're surprised that they're flabbergasted at what's yeah. ha- what's happened in the last ten years even. Yeah. Um, I just don't think we give ourselves enough credit too. Um, you know, well, you ironically, can't... it works as an explosion when you look at Buffalo, right. New York. It was oh, I mean, decades, and all of a sudden, a baseball cap company came into town. Highmark remodeled the building. The construction downtown just uh, exploded. People were saving old buildings, new company, and suddenly. Buffalo is a vibrant, outstanding exactly. community as it was in the 1909s, mm-hmm. uh, 1907, you know, back back uh, when it was a shipping uh, flower capital, railroad capital of the country, and all of a sudden it's booming. So um, young people are critical to having Erie explode again, and, mm-hmm. and you're seeing somewhat of a growth or a good amount of growth? Definitely. You, f- you, feel, you folks feel that? Oh, definitely. Oh, that's yes. great to hear. I, I mean, yeah. especially with you know the the colleges and lecom yeah. and um yeah upmc i mean and St. plenty Vincent, of job opportunities there are there for are young people mm-hmm. okay so that poor fellow who's 40 that turned 41 you don't have that dotted line again <laughs> no we don't we don't have <laughs> you the don't dotted really line. used to have that dot it was a pretty hard line for a while but so as a folk as folks sort of mature and the other there uh do you see yep becoming bigger so to speak or are you going to keep that format you mentioned that you're reorganizing to some degree yeah you're doing some proactive things right now maybe right. if you address that that'll answer the question what are you doing from now to the future what's yep going to do organizationally so we we recently had a strategic planning session where the the leaders got together and mm-hmm. and just talk about talked who about that is not each but is it a group of people, five or ten people? Right, we or? have seven on our leadership team. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, they're the chairs of those different committees. Okay. And then we also have a vice president who uh, is uh, actually going to school for her doctorate in organizational leadership. So oh. it's the perfect person for for the organization. You're gaining something. They're exactly. gaining something. Exactly. And, you know, we're all learning – through this process too, it's mm-hmm. giving us experience on, you know, in how to manage an organization and to structure it, and we really are um, starting from from the ground up because we want to make sure that it is successful moving forward. And, and it's pertinent. You're yes. part of the chamber, which was an excellent exactly. move. Exactly. Uh, you want to be effective in the community. Uh, you have a program, I believe, called the Young Erie Ambassador Program. Can you talk the, about Is that okay to talk about? So that's um, under the chamber. The, that's under the chamber. Right. Okay. And so our, we, the Member and Business Engagement Committee used to be the oh, Young Ambassador okay. Committee. But it, there was just too much confusion. So we recently changed the name of our committee to the Member and Business Engagement. Okay. But now your efforts, your energy, your different board, uh, I want to call them boards, but board members and members now can participate with the chamber. In this exactly. Outreach. So, yeah, for example, mm-hmm. they, the chamber allows the young area professionals two spots to go through their Erie, Amba- Erie Ambassadors oh, program. Oh, okay. Which usually so that's costs, how you participate in that Exactly. Program. And okay. so it usually it costs, you know, a couple hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. So we allow... That's not an um, easy program. That takes a little work. It, I think it's nine weeks. Yeah. It's nine, a, nine week program yeah. and it's a few hours, but... I went through it a few years ago, and and like I said, I Did was you? raised okay. here, and I learned a lot, even even being raised here. So um, I learned a lot about Erie, and um, it's definitely an awesome program. We're if, talking with Christy Bailey, president of the Young Erie Professionals. Some of your other team, Stephanie Fetzner. Yes. She's vice president. Terry Carson. Yes. C- civic engagement, right? He's the community fella. Mm-hmm. Paul Schur. Paul Shear, professional, professional leadership uh, and development chair. Casey Brewer, she's is the chair the of the member and business engagement team, right? Committee. Yes. Eric Brotherson, I don't want to miss anybody. No. Creative director, I think I got everybody. You did. Mm-hmm. Good, good. 
How and we, it, we have a new we have a new uh, leader coming on board. His name is uh, Jason Cardinelli as well. And his job will he's be going to, he's uh, going to. Uh, so we're we're already restructuring a little bit. So Paul Shear he's been really instrumental in our mentoring aspect. So for with the colleges, so that is a oh. huge piece of the puzzle in in of itself so we decided to create a separate committee for that so okay. that's going to be the mentor uh, mentoring piece and uh the jason jason carnelli he's going to step up as uh the professional and leadership two quick chair. questions how do people find you let's say uh, this interview motivates someone to want to at least come by and say hello how do they find you so we have, you can join online, yupiri.org. Okay, um, yupiri.org. We also mm-hmm. have a very active Facebook page and Instagram. Yep. So uh, if you're interested in checking out what we have going on, we post all of uh, all the different things that we have going on in the community and on At Facebook. At the yup.org site, or Facebook on is faster Facebook, for yes. you. Yeah, good. So, th- so good, yup, good. yup, Yuri, it will uh, show you how to become a member. But uh, once you're a member, then obviously you're connected and you know what's going on in the different events. Uh, you get emails and things like that from the chair. I, I would encourage anyone of any age to, to visit and see what you folks are Definitely. accomplishing in this community. You're going through a little reorganization, but that means you're growing and right. doing important. Hey, you're all LinkedIn people, too. I like that's that because right. that's a huge <laughs> network, as you know. It is. And in the, we, we know how to find you. Last question, and I always ask this, uh, how does your board work? Do you have a board? Right now, we our board is basically made up of those seven leaders. All right, so your board is your leadership right. for now. Right. right. And that's how you're org- – I always ask that because nonprofits or even for-profits like to know how organizations as yours are structured, mm-hmm. and they might learn something. Right. Or they may just decide they want to do a project with you, let's say. Right. Right. Um, because you folks are entrepreneurs. We are. You're, you're well embedded in the community. You're sitting at the chamber. Your offices are with them, or you're just working we, through that now? Right. We we don't have offices. Yeah, so you're virtual. Per se. Yes. Yeah, which yes. is okay. And we, we meet um, at different places for lunch and yeah. um, you're, wherever, uh, wherever we can find a spot. So even if you have a, um, a space that yeah. you... You would want to host us for a meeting. We'd be happy and to come in. And I think they'd be uh, honored to have you because definitely. it would be a great way to meet uh, the young component of our community. What's the youngest age that you have? What's what is there a minimum? Twenty one. So you're coming out of college, so mm-hmm. to speak, or no high school aged folks? No. no, no. No, I'm not saying that's bad or good. I was just curious to see how far from forty down do you go? And uh, but I, I bet you if you had a young entrepreneur who was 15 years old, you would not discriminate if he was successful no. or she was successful? No. Yeah. If I mean, if they find value in, in being a part of the group, then, yeah, yeah we definitely welcome. What better welcome. place to meet uh, an outstanding group of people? Christy Bailey, um, your day job is Erie Federal Credit Union. Your all the rest of the time job That's right. uh, is the young Erie professionals. Um and you're a domiciled, so to speak, at the Erie Regional Chamber and Growth Partnership. And the best place for people to find you is to get on Facebook. Yes. And look for, uh, yep, look or for the Erie organization. Or yupeerie.org. Uh, there you go, yupeerie.org, mm-hmm. which is really easy. And uh, uh, I humbly suggest they call you, talk to you, and, and thank you very much for thank visiting you. today. Thank you for having me. You're great. Thank fun. you again. Mm-hmm. This is wonderful. Thank you. On NPR News, it's all about the story. People can surprise you anytime. The people behind movies, books, and music. Music is like a Rorschach test, you know, and people hear what they want to hear. I'm Arun Roth, the new host of All Things Considered from NPR News, now coming to you every weekend from NPR West in Southern California. Sunday afternoon at 5 on WQLN Radio. This is Jeff Hanley, host of Jazz Happening Now. 
Each week we listen to some of the latest jazz recordings, and I think you'll be thrilled by what today's jazz musicians are doing and saying. The recording industry has changed, but the music is as alive and as vibrant as ever. The future of jazz is happening right now, if you just listen. And please do. Sunday night at 6 on WQLN Radio. Welcome to We Question and Learn. This is your host, Tom Pies, underwritten by the Lord Corporation. Increasing the value of customers' products, using adhesives, coatings, and systems for controlling shock, motion, and noise on the web at lord.com and by Strategy Solutions, a business development firm that provides strategic planning, market research, and project management services to private corporations, faith, and community-based nonprofits, and to communities on the web at GetStrategy.com. Com. Special guest today, we're really happy to have Mike Smiley at the table from Decision Associates, an executive consultant. Your, your firm, let's just say you, you yourself, Mike, uh, you're a marketing specialist. You know a lot about advertising. I've spent, yeah, I've spent 30 plus career, uh, years in the, in the uh, field. Tell us who your clients are. Our base at Decision Associates, um, yeah, kind of a reflection of the region. We tend to work within a two, three hour um, range of, of the market here, and we do that intentionally. Um, we're you know a bit of a boutique shop in that uh, we like to be home with family at night. Yeah. Um, so it's from a lifestyle standpoint, it works pretty good. But yep. there's. It's. I, I think a lot of people would be uh, if they're they're not in the space, they'd be surprised uh, how many companies uh, really are are working. For, you know, companies that have ten employees, companies that have fifty, companies that have two hundred employees throughout our, our region. And you know, as you push into a little bit into Ohio or a little bit into New York, you just run into a, an awful lot of firms that are doing fantastic work, develop great products, and, and really, you know, produce those products and, and sell them all over the world. So we, we get a chance to work with a lot of them. Um, Lee Thorty was just up yeah. here, and he's saying the same thing you are, actually, that there are incredible opportunities, there are excellent businesses here, yeah. and, and they just need a little push. Right, little right. Push. That's yeah. what you do. That's what we do. Yeah, we um, our services will encompass. Um, you know, we might start doing some strategic planning, and a lot of companies that work our plans, mm-hmm. they'll do a three-year, five-year plan, and then then we'll do another one with them, etc. And what they're really trying to do is is map out um, their direction, their movie movie of the future. Of where do we go? Um, and 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 set some really clear, um, very very tangible, very evidence-based objectives. And they achieve them, and then they move past them, and they grow. And those those companies that are successful doing that, whether they're for profit or not for profit, tend to uh, reach their goals, and, and you'll see them double and double again and double again. Um, I would like people to hear that, especially yeah. the nonprofit sector, because we have a huge non sure we do group. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good people, mm-hmm. wonderful people, but they're always struggling. Yeah, how do you push that over the edge? And that's what you do. Yeah, that's I, I think you know capacity building is you know when we talk about nonprofits is is really uh, is really what we're looking at and um, you know whether they're trying to grow funding sources, um, grow the, the the base of their their donors or their volunteers, um, attract the best board people, um, all of those things become a, a part of, of of what they're about. Aside from strategy, will that often leads into a conversation about you know what we're going to talk about today: marketing, marketing strategy, and, yeah. and, and even specific uh, marketing communications tactics. Well, our firm also does a lot of executive search. We're actually, uh, I, I you know, I, I think by our count, the you know the kind of the busiest search firm in the region. And I think that's a reflection of the times. The last few years for us have just been. Um, extremely busy in search. As companies are looking for top talent, we tend to focus on upper management and, and then higher vice presidents, uh, presidents. Um, I think in the last three years, we've placed over 18, 20 presidents for companies in the region. And so, uh, you know, people are looking for, for great talent to lead their organizations forward. There's a lot of family owned businesses that are at that point where well, one generation is retiring. Um, ready to finally step aside. They may want to retain ownership. They may not. Um, so they're looking to at somebody who's going to be able to grow that asset for them and manage that asset. Yeah. One of the things that happens is that, particularly for a family-owned business, is is somebody will reach uh, whatever age and say, you know what, uh, doesn't look like my kids want the business, or I'm you know I'm getting tired. Um, it's time to sell. Well, when you when you reach that that uh, you know that conclusion. You, you probably need then another three to five years to get the business ready to sell. 
because you're really looking at, you've, you've got to improve your top line. The companies that are, 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 are looking to sell it and, and want to maximize what they, the blood, sweat, and mm -hmm. tears and the, the investment that they put into it, um, those are the ones that are going to take the time to get the, get the operations where they need to be. Sometimes it's facility upgrades, um, uh, et cetera. Um, other times it's, it's, you know, from a marketing perspective, as people look at businesses to buy, they're looking at you online, they're looking at your, at their, your brand, they're looking at all those things that are a part of what they're going to invest in. And um, if, if those things are in shape, in other words, you've got a great web presence, you've, your sales and marketing team is, is, is hitting all their marks, all that stuff's ready, then they don't have to worry about that. They don't have to invest in that when they buy the business. Now they can, you know, oftentimes somebody who's buying business may not even know that in particular industry. They're looking for an investment and they're looking for a company that's going to yield, a, you know, X amount of dollars a year in revenue for them. There's a company um, in, in down in Crawford kind of working with right now. They're looking at their sales and marketing function. Well, marketing is supporting their salespeople because, you know, the, the sales end of it is that they've, yeah. they've got to go out and, and, and uh, identify customers and, uh, um, and, and, and make the sale the good or the product, uh, the service that they're selling. Marketing's job is really is, is to um, establish the brand, enhance the brand, strengthen the brand. Uh, marketing's job is to establish the relationship um, and to create opportunities for engagement. And, it, and it's really to, uh, I, you know, to lay the groundwork so that people are, are ready to, they're, they're ready to, be, to sell, um, they're ready to buy. Um, I think what, you know, whether it's, a, and we, we talk about this all the time with organizations that we work with, you know, what, what's changed in the last several years, and, and uh, companies, a lot of companies are scratching their heads and we're working with a lot of them to help them through this, um, but what's changed is, is that much as we in our, our private lives, our personal lives, have taken control of the buying process, so whether we're buying a car, we're buying a washer and dryer, what, whatever it is, um, you know, how do we do that? Well, we go online and we research, and sometimes we spend several hours, sometimes several days, <laughs> um, you know, looking at our options, considering we're, we're reading reviews, uh, we're reading uh, testimonials about what other people say about the product or the service, if we're going to a hotel or a vacation spot, if we're looking at a car. Um, we do all those things. Well, well, buyers, purchasers, engineers at companies, they're all doing the same thing. They, they want to control their day. Um, you know, they, they've made the decision that they're, whether they start their day at 5 a.m. or they start their day at 9, and if they work into the evening, et cetera, they want to control the flow of their day. They want to control their workload because, you know, uh, we're, we're working leaner these days. And so in the midst of that, what they're doing is they're, they're finding particular times like, okay, I'm going to spend these, this, this hour today or these two hours on Wednesday and I'm going to do my research for this project. I, I, I've got to find the best resource at the lowest cost um, from a, a, a brand or a company that I trust. I, I can't afford to have it fail. Um, I know it needs to meet these specs. Mm -hmm. And um, they expect to be able to find that information, that at least be able to introduce themselves to resources to do that online. And that's really, mm -hmm. I think, the, the big shift in that um, as, as, as uh, companies that we work with have said, you know the the, uh, the the paradigm has shifted in terms of uh, you know we are, you know cold calling does cold calling still work yes if you there's 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 a place uh, for cold calling in the mix of your your sales effort etc but mm -hmm. but really what, what what marketing does for companies is it 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 helps to create a, an environment it, it surrounds potential customers if you're targeting it correctly it surrounds them with the information they need to introduce themselves to your company, yeah. um, for them to engage when they want to with your company, yeah. to access the information that they're looking for, yeah. and and then that gives you the the opportunity to be very specific, I think, and and be very um, very pointed in, in going back to them and saying, I understand your problem um, because this is what you've looked for. I understand what you're looking for. Let me tell you how we can provide a solution, how we can help you, and then you can make a decision if we're in fact the best fit. We really encourage our, the companies that we work with to do, whether again, whether they're nonprofit or, or for-profit companies, yeah. is is to establish a real strong foundation. In fact, in the last the last few months, uh, we did one in the fall here in Erie. Um, we've we um, we recently did uh, a session on this up in Warren, and and we're uh, I think we're going to be down in uh, the Mercer County area hmm. in in another couple of weeks. But and it's it's you know we spend about ninety minutes two hours with folks and we we talk to them um, about a, a foundational approach 
um, that in today's age that, that you, you kind of have you need to here's here's 10 things to check off. Um, so, you know, we, we, we start we start with the basics of uh, of a plan, uh, you know, some type of a marketing plan. And people people say, well, I've got that in my head or, um, you know, that's that's a part of our strategic plan. But we say, no, 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 let's let's take a look at the marketing piece. And very specifically, you know, what are you what are you trying to do? So what are those those basic things of your objective? And have you assigned some dollars to it or is the company giving you the green light to put a budget to it? Um, and have you then said, who are we trying to reach? And, and it's not just one audience, but multiple audiences, depending on who your product or your service uh, or what your organization has to offer is about. Mm -hmm. And then as part of that plan, um, how are you going to measure it? Um, so that, that plan is, 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 is a good starting point. Um, and then again, in the digital space, we talk to them about um, who are you, uh, who are, who's referring business into you? So things like online directories for manufacturers, um, and, you know, that, that might be things like Global Spec or, or McRae's or Pro, uh, Process Register, things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly for, uh, for nonprofit organizations, there, there's similar directories. But, but those help, those, those relationships by being uh, re listed with them, et cetera, those help Google and the other search engines find you. And, and again, it's really, you know, as we talk about all this stuff, it, it's, the, the key really is, you know, we go back to the premise that people are, are spending hours you know, several hours researching before they make a call um, to verify. And there's actually, there, it's kind of interesting. There's a piece of, there's a piece of, of research that talks about this. It's it, that people will spend seven to eight hours, um, it, you know, maybe it's a buyer from a company, and they'll spend seven or eight hours for a specific, to fill a specific solution or need. So they're researching companies, et cetera. They're looking at options, et cetera. And they'll make, in the, you know, it's a, a 1.4 call. So what does that mean? That means that, <laughs> That, that they're calling, you know, sometimes one, sometimes two companies that say, okay, I've, I've made my decision. I've vetted who I wanted, and I want to make sure you're for real, and let's have a conversation so I can make sure you can deliver what I think I've read that you can deliver. Um, so, you know, again, much as we would do with a, a car purchase or whatever, we're calling and saying, okay, here's my price that I'm willing to pay for the car that you have online. Yeah. Um, they're doing the same type of thing. They're, they're wow. you know, they, they're really taking it that way. So, again, it... it a lot of this is about, um, you know, managing the, managing your online presence and manage, and surrounding them with the information they need. You know, a third thing that we talk to companies about, and, and again, I in this day and age, I'm sometimes surprised, um, more often these days not that mm. that there's not there's there's some level some companies are very sophisticated in how they're storing their customer contacts. So they're using, you know, uh, CRM systems yeah. um, and, 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 and or they in some companies have found even with their ERP systems that they're running their whole business with that within that is a CRM system. Yeah. That yeah. can be accessed, et cetera. Uh, others are using, you know, they'll have the, the, the sales manager or sales director who's been there 20 years. He's like, well, I got it all up here. Um, and he's pointing to his head. And uh, it's like, well, that's, you know, so if you get run over by the, you know, the, the, the truck today, um, you know, there goes our, our, our customer base. Um, others are a step ahead and they've got it on an Excel spreadsheet, et cetera. But certainly you need to have some type of a tool where you've got your customer contacts and you're understanding where they are and you're, you're able to uh, have a, a forum or a platform where either, you know, with email and, and, and text and, uh, and, and other tools, you're able to get a hold of them. Uh, on a regular basis, you have the information that you need, and then within that, you're you know uh, another piece is breaking down those audiences. Where where do they fit? Um, you know, are you if you have a range of products and services, it's not the same audience for each one. So you know you know who are they? Where are they? Um, you know what what are their 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 buying habits? Um, do you have do you have the basic stuff of their job titles and 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 how who makes the decision? Do you have that written? You know, is that a part of your, your database, et cetera? So all those things become, become a part of it. Um, the other, I, I'll just go through a few more foundational things. We, you know, we talk to companies about, um, again, it gets to, to findability. We talk to them about uh, keywords. Um, and so if, if I'm looking for you online, um, you know, what are the terms that people use to describe, uh, to, to describe your service or what are they, what are they typing in to search for it? Well, you can find that out. There's tools that'll help you find that out. Very simple tools that'll say these in your industry, or if you're a, you're a nonprofit organization and in your field, these are the terms that people are looking for when they have a problem and they're looking for a solution. This is what, these are the, the phrases that they're typing in. And the more specific that phrase can be, 
the more specific you you can be in terms of responding to that you can you can create content you can create paid search ads that that'll that'll be um, respond to that and, you, and you'll come up in that search um, so then you know the, the next logical step is is building um, some content and this is where it and it doesn't matter what who you're talking to um, it, whether it's nonprofits big or small if it's uh, manufacturing firms large or small um, Everybody scratches their head and says, yeah, we know we should have content and we, we can't find a way to get to it. We don't have anybody that can do it uh, or anybody that wants to do it, et cetera. And, and I, I, it's, you know, what I think what companies, they, they make it more challenging than it, than it has to be because everybody has stories. You have, you know, your, you have your staff, your experts, whether it's your engineers or your, 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 your seasoned employees, uh, if you're a nonprofit who have been there dealing with your stakeholders for years. And they all have stories. They all have, um, they all, they all have things to talk about. Um, so you can capture that on video, very inexpensively with, with our phones, et cetera. Um, you can certainly uh, have, uh, you know, whether it's a college student or you hire a freelancer or you have somebody on your staff, sit down and you can capture those in writing. And now you have those as, as, um, as testimonials um, or case studies. Um, so you can develop these, you can develop uh, what I, I call them evergreen pieces of content that really are the very nature of the legacy of what your organization is about or what your products and services are about. And, and then you can decide when, when do we share these? What's the best time to share these uh, during the course of our year? Is it, be, you know, if we're, if we're in a manufacturing firm, is it prior to going to, to a trade show in a trade show season? Is it before we go into a certain market, if we're going into the Southwest and we're going to be calling on a half a dozen to a dozen companies? They know we're coming. They might be researching about us online. Now they're going to bump into stories about us because we've shared them. We've put them out there um, on our website. We might have shared them across our social media platform. We might have been able to place an article in an industry publication. Um, so all of those things uh, be become a piece of that. And certainly, you know, the, the step of, as you develop that content, of calendarizing it and saying, okay, who's responsible for what? Um, and in a lot of organizations, that's gonna be one person. Um, but in others, it can be a shared responsibility. And, and everybody's going to, you know, mul having multiple voices is certainly uh, can be beneficial to an organization. One of the key things that, that is really important, and in, in, um, I think that whether, you're, again, whether you're in, in a manufacturing firm in, uh, in, in the B2B space uh, or if you're a nonprofit, one of the key things that from a, a, the standpoint of authenticity and from uh, impact is to find a way to have the leadership of your organization have a presence online. Um, now they may not want to make time for it, so then you have to make time for them. You have to capture them on video. You have to be able to get them to sit down and do an interview, perhaps like we're doing today. Mm -hmm. Capture those thoughts. Capture the essence of you know where's our where's our company going? What are our challenges? What are the challenges in our industry? Um, how do we respond to them? You know, what, who, who are we trying to help? How are we trying to make a difference? Uh, what value are we bringing? Um, how do we solve problems? All those things can be answered. When they're answered by a leadership in your organization, they just have that much more impact, um, and, and they become really important. So then as you've, you've got all that stuff in line, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, for years a lot of companies were, were you know, they were turning, turning their, their noses up to social media. But I think most companies these days have, have started to embrace it and understand that um, – it, it's the, these are the platforms where people are spending time, both in their business lives and their personal lives. And so, how can I use these platforms to share my story, um, share our story, if, if you know, if, as an organization, in in a in a very compelling way? You know, video rolls, videos king. Um, people love to click on a video and have somebody speak to them. It 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 lets you. It makes it feel real. Uh, you f you feel like you have a sense of knowing the person or knowing the company a little bit better, and certainly um, as as you get a little more sophisticated with video, you can do some really neat things and, and tell your story in, in a really compelling way, mm. um, and show what you're doing and show the impact of what you're doing. And again, whether it's a, a product or service, I you know I'm always um, I'm uh, I'm always amazed when I walk into to manufacturing uh, firms throughout this region. And you go in and you're scratching your head and you're saying, who the heck figured out how to make this? <laughs> how did they figure it's out? It's like that how it's made program. It's yeah, it, it is incredible. Oh, it's yeah. like, who figured out the, how this machine with all these gadgets and gears and stuff <laughs> is, how did, how did they come about doing this? And look at this product that it did in the, the attributes of this product and what it can do um, or how it improves another product. 
um, th that stuff, those, those stories are, are, are just so great. Um, so th again, whether you use one medium, such as LinkedIn, um, or uh, if you're using YouTube to show your videos, or you're using multiple platforms, you still want to go out and, and we, we call it securing your platforms. It, because on online, um, all of those things become a part of your digital footprint. And even though you might, might not be real active, you want to grab them because if you don't grab them, and I'll, I'll use LinkedIn as an example. If, you, mm -hmm. if your company hasn't gone on to LinkedIn and said, you know, here, we're XYZ company and this is what we do, you know, brief statement about it. And here's, here's the services or, or programs that we offer or products that we offer. Um, and here's some of the folks that work for us. If you don't do that yourself, LinkedIn has done it for you. And what they've done is they've grabbed a piece of information um, off your website or off somewhere they found it on the web, and they've stuck it up there. And, and it'll say that if you go and, you, again, if you haven't claimed it and taken, uh, you know, taken responsibility for the page, it'll say, well, you know, this was put up by LinkedIn. And if you'd like to claim it and you're, you've got a, a, you know, a legitimate email from the company, now you can be the manager or the administrator of this page. Um, you, so across any of those platforms, yeah. if, you're not, if you're not taking, your, uh, taking uh, uh, control of your name and control of your platform, somebody else may have already done it for you. Um, and companies will do that. Wow. So now I'm thinking you have to hire somebody that knows how to do it's, this. It's good to Isn't, get some It is good to get some help. Or at least bring a consultant yeah. in or do yeah. because there's just something. You're not pulling your own tooth. You could. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's. I think it's good to get some help, even if somebody is is doing what we're doing today and saying, "All right, here's here's a half a dozen to ten things that you should consider, and let's work through them. And if you want to work on them, fine. And then check back. Let's check back and make sure that they're done in the right way, because there are best practices, as there would in, would be in anything. Mm -hmm. There's best practices to to optimize the time and the dollars that you might be investing. Um, and again, you you might hire a, a firm to do this. You know, an agency that, that specializes in it. You might hire a freelancer, um, and, and again, you might find might find that somebody within your company has this talent, but might need the guidance of somebody who, uh, you know, a, uh, a specialist um, or an expert that, that has spent some time here can bring some best practices to you, and then you can take advantage of that. So, do you get a, you get a marketing firm like yourself? Yeah. Do you hire an ad agency subsequent, or do you hire a consultant, or do you just have? Uh, are there people? Out in the real world, this is my question, that do all of this for manufacturing, particularly, let's say. Or do you have to piece these? Oh, no, I think I, any and all of those work. Tom. It does. Yeah, there are people there, that do this. There are, yeah, yeah. There, any and all of, those, all of those can work. You know, what we do with a lot of companies is that um, they'll, we'll sit down and we, we might have worked them through their strategic plan or their marketing plan or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll sit and, and take a look and say, okay, are these things in place? Are these this basic foundation? Of, of these marketing assets and these tools, um, are they in place? Do you, and are you willing to, you know, as, as part of the investment you're making in your company, you're going to uh, add new equipment, you're going to add new staff. Well, you, you need to continue to add to your, to your marketing footprint. Um, uh, you know, are you, are you ready to invest in that and, 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 and be able to compete in today's world uh, in the online space? And if so, let's, let's start the foundation. Let's, let's help you build it. And then we'll train you, teach you, um, basically how to run it on your own. Um, and again, for okay. for a lot of companies, there, you know, on a very basic level, um, you there's there may be somebody who's in admin support, administrative support uh, type of a role who would be glad to take on, you know, to learn this and, and, and take on the basic foundations of it. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, there's there's um, uh, there's parts of it when you get into ongoing social media content. And, and post if you're doing paid search. Those things become a little more technical and, and take a little more time where, again, you, you might, that might be something you want to outsource and have somebody manage it for you and then, uh, you know, report The more you go on, it. the scarier it gets to me because it seems like this is almost impossible to coordinate by yourself from scratch because that's not what you went to school for. You make if, things. You make widgets. You provide services. Right. You're a warehousing right. operation. Yeah. It would seem to me that by the time I figured that out, yeah. As good as I am at what I do, right. wouldn't it be better for me to hire somebody to manage all this for me? 
Yeah, I, I, I think I, I, mean, I, just, I yeah, I would either. I'm, I'm asking based on your experience. Yeah, my ex, yeah, I, I in would, the real world. Yeah, yeah, and what we see is that more and more yeah. companies, um, and you know, let's let's talk about manufacturers in the region. Yeah. Many of them tried to do it on their own and didn't do it so well. Um, and then uh, a number of them went out and, and you know they hired an ad agency or a marketing firm. You know, they they might have engaged us to help them build a foundation, mm -hmm. and then they they attempted to do it without a formal role internally. Um, said, okay, we're set. But, you know, like anything, like a piece of equipment that if you don't pay attention to it and, and maintain it, it, it it's not going to stop performing. Well, the same thing happens with your marketing program. If you've got a website or social media or, 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 or paid search and you're not paying attention to it and updating it and evolving it um, because the rest of that space is evolving, mm -hmm. um, then it's going to quit functioning uh, the way you want it to. So, I, you know, what we've seen in the past few years is that you know uh, they they might use a, a you know, manufacturers may use a firm like ours to help them get the foundation set, and then they they they'll turn to uh, you know they'll hire a marketing coordinator, a, a, a person. Yeah, they'll identity. have an individual inside. Yeah. And again, um, you know sometimes it's somebody who's expanding. A, uh, is a, it's a current person expanding a role. Uh, a company I was with yesterday, mm -hmm. um, they had an individual who was fairly early in her sales career, um, but really had I, I think some good intuition and good sense. Uh, a, a good sense of what the marketing space was about. Mm -hmm. She evolved out of a sales role into the marketing role. Um, so, so what? So now the the sales team, which is you know it's a smaller sales team of, of four to five people, yeah. they rely on her because in in terms of she's she's really driving um, she's driving the engagement for them for their yeah. customers. Some companies or managers or owners expect the salespeople to do this. Yeah. And yeah. That's a self-defeating mechanism. It's yeah. It's it's not their focus. Yeah. Um, for there are probably some of them that they would have the aptitude to do it, but gr you know, great salespeople sell. Yeah, um, and that's what they're supposed. That's to That's what they're supposed yeah. to do. That's what drives their you know that that's what what, what drives their their day. Um, mm -hmm. Their their motive. That's what they're motivated about. And uh, you know, you're wasting their their capabilities and their talent uh, if you've you've got them doing this other piece. Uh, because there's somebody else that probably does the marketing piece better, um, that that wants to tell the you know develop and help you tell your stories, and give you the give the sales team the tools that they need um, to be able to uh, engage customers or prospects, engage stakeholders, uh, get them interested in what you're about, um, tell your stories, and then really um, it, you know kind of warm up the lead, warm up the the relationship. Yeah. So that then you're able to go deeper. This is a different structure from 20 and 30 years ago. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Salespeople will say that is, is you know, it has the world changed so much that I can't, can you know, will will somebody take my call? Yeah. And and we, you know, we do, we, we do, we look at a lot of secondary research, what's happening nationally, yeah. what's happening regionally. We also do research on behalf of our clients. And we do research um, just from a business standpoint of, uh, you know, among manufacturers, among nonprofit organizations, what's working for them. Um, and what we found is, is that uh, for a lot of these companies, uh, literally three quarters, if you, if you talk to buyers today mm -hmm. um, across, you know, let's, um, let, let's look at the manufacturing space. You talk to buyers in the manufacturing space, three quarters of them will, will tell you, and this research supports this, that, yeah, I'm, I'm open to your email, I'm open to your, your phone call. Now, it may take you a little bit of time to get through, but they're open to it. And they're open to it from the standpoint of huh. if you've provided them from a, an online presence if, with the information they need to make to know about your company, to know about your brand, and to know your stories, all right, I'm, I'm going to take your call. Now, what's your job after they take your call? Your job is to be concise. It's to be um, uh, in, a, in a partnership mode. Uh, so don't sell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me the benefits of your product or service. Yeah. Um, talk to me. Know enough about my company that you know you know my industry and, and know what we're dealing with. What so what's changed in my industry? And, and then you've thought about that, and now you're saying you know if you're like a lot of other companies we work with, you're probably struggling with this. So from there, now I've got a platform to say, okay, well, you know, they, all right, they're, on, they're, they're in my space. They, they know what we do, and they understand what, what's keeping me up at night. So here's some solutions that we've come up with. These are some ways that we've helped other companies like you or other organizations like you um, solve that. Mike Smiley, a real education. Thank you for all that information. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Tom.